Hello, and thank you for joining Teledyne LaCroix today. A few housekeeping items before we begin our webinar. To keep us running on time, we will hold Q&A at the end of the webinar, but feel free to submit your questions as they come up using the question section of your control panel. This webinar is being recorded. A link to the recording and the slides will be sent automatically to you via email within the next 48 hours. Upon exiting today's webinar, there will be a short survey that pops up. Please take a moment and answer these five questions so that we can continue to provide valuable content to you. For those just logging in, thank you for joining Teledyne McCroy today for our Oscilloscope Coffee Break webinar series presented by Steve Murphy. This is part three of our six part series. Today's session will focus on getting your trigger to do what you want. A little bit about us, LaCroix was founded by Alabama native Walter LaCroix in 1964. Our corporate headquarters is in Chestnut Ridge, New York, but we have sales and service offices all over the United States and the rest of the world. We started as an oscilloscope manufacturer focusing on physical layer tests and have branched out into protocol analysis through several compatible acquisitions. In 2012, LaCroix was acquired by Teledyne Technologies and we were renamed Teledyne LaCroix. Our presenter today is Steve Murphy, Field Applications Engineer at Teledyne LaCroix. Steve is based out of our corporate headquarters and has held a variety of roles during his 25 years with us, including all things sales, marketing, and applications focused. We know there are a lot of demands on your time and we appreciate you taking the time with us today. I'll now hand things over to Steve to begin. Uh, thank you very much, Lena. I appreciate that. And I'd like to add uh, my welcome to everyone for our third part, a third uh, part of this uh, Coffee Break webinar series. And this one's all about that trigger and getting that trigger to do what you want. So, um, so this is uh, just, a, just a quick overview of the coffee breaks. There is uh, the purpose here, the goal every 30 minutes, right, Thursday. And then these are the, uh, the first six as uh, we, uh, at, for the start of 2021. And then the topics from the invitation regarding triggering is listed here. And so we're gonna do trigger modes, trigger selections, coupling, filters, pre-trigger, and update rates. And, uh, and so the agenda as I go through those, uh, those items is, first of all, I'm just doing the intro right now. Uh, we're, we'll move into the trigger modes, then we'll get into the controls. Um, they delay the navigational preferences and um, types and update rates. So, and we're going to cover that in about 30 to 40 minutes. <laughs> All right. So um, to set the stage, why don't I do this? Why don't I start with this? I am going to go right to here. I'm going to say hello. And again, welcome. This is my workbench. And so this is the oscilloscope So you're and that I'm, I'm using. This is a uh, Teledyne LaCroix Wave Runner 8000 HD. And so I'm going to use that as the uh, instrument. We're going to also, uh, I've got a signal source here uh, that's uh, getting power from USB that uh, provides us some signals. Uh, this oscilloscope is Windows based, so it's going to run the scope application. It's also running PowerPoint and it's also running this uh, camcorder and the, uh, and of course, I've got the browser going on and so it's tied into the through my router, I tied into the GoToWebinar site. So that's really what was going on here. I've got a whole plethora of probes around me and off to the side and different duts. But anyway, this is our uh, our our setup here for today as I as I cover the introduction. So uh, next is let's go back to this. Okay, so I'm I am setting the stage. So let's talk about triggers. And so this is now we're looking at a couple waveforms right here. And of note is the trigger location here on the bottom. So this is giving us about, looks like around what, 16% pre-trigger and about the rest and the rest of that of the of the 10 grid horizontal display. Uh, the grid is uh, is post-trigger. So that's an important point to watch out for is where that zero delay, where our trigger point is. And then also is our trigger level. And that's indicated off here to the right with this, I call it a carrot. 
off to the right. So this really is our trigger location. And by those two points, and they are marked, as I had mentioned earlier. And I think then um, that's, I think we're set here. I'm going to point, let me go back to the slide. We're going to also look at these here on the bottom right, the time, base, and trigger descriptors. So um, um, more to more coming up on that. Just to also point out, you know, got to do a got to do a block diagram, right? <laughs> and so we're going to look at this four-channel scope here, and it's got its own front-end amplifier. But I just wanted to, you know, and of course there's uh, there's some interleaving in this particular example, and then there's some memory and and uh, and how we process the raw uh, samples anyway. But I but. But for today, I really, the attention here is on the trigger. And the trigger does get, its sources can be any analog channel as we see here from any one of those channels. Also not displayed is the external um, input uh, directly into this trigger, which, and also digital. So you can get, you know, 16 channels, uh, depending on your, uh, the oscilloscope that you're using, uh, will vary on the, uh, minimum to maximum number of digital channels. But nonetheless, this is an amplifier. It has its own bandwidth, its own 3 dB point, you know, and so um, it, it has its own signal path within the acquisition system. And when we talk about some triggers later on in the webinar, we'll, we'll make note of, of, of how this affects some of the uh, triggers. So that's the block diagram. This is what I'm using today as uh, you, you uh, saw uh, live. And, and this is a two gig scope. It's 12 bits on every one of those eight channels. There's a sample rate. And okay, let's, uh, let's, let's go into the trigger modes. And what I get sometimes from customers is, why is my scope not showing me anything? What is going on? And that is uh, draws attention to the trigger uh, mode. So, um, you know, triggers are used to start an acquisition, especially on a single uh, transient event. And so we're going to capture and, and uh, start the acquisition. And then it's also going to help us the trigger to synchronize the acquisitions for a stable display. So we're always cheering at the same spot. So our, and with a repetitive waveform, we'll get nice and uh, um, clean, stable displays. Um, if we are not going to be in a repetitive mode, then we will need to, uh, and our signals do vary, we may need to go to a single shot acquisition. So therefore, let's talk about trigger modes. What are the differences here? And I've got auto, normal, single, uh, display. What is auto? Auto says, hey, let's try to find a trigger. Let's try to find a valid voltage or current level. Uh, uh, of, of interest, and then uh, let's keep the pre-trigger, since we're always acquiring, right? We're always acquiring, then we're gonna keep the pre-trigger, and then we're gonna fill up the memory. Um, and, um, and so if there is a trigger, great, it will trigger. But if there's no trigger, what will happen? Uh, you're gonna get an update, so you can see what's going on, so we don't run into that with, <laughs> into the, hey, What's what's going on? How come I have no display? So, uh, and then just to vary this uh, or to talk about normal, normal says, hey, I'm only going to update uh, the display once I have a valid trigger point. So I'll keep the pre-trigger and fill it up, but only on a armed and valid trigger. Single says, hey, I'm just going to update it once and then I'm going to stop. I'm not going to rearm my trigger circuit and then uh, acquire again. So that is single. Now, some manufacturers of scopes call these things a, a little bit different. Uh, there's auto or run, I should say, and stop. So there is those on, but you may need to, on those scopes, look at uh, whether you want them to be a continuous triggering if it's not, or a continuous update if there is no trigger, or uh, if you do have only going to update when you have normal trigger. So it's just a little different. This is how the Teledyne LaCroix front panel is. And then also for Teledyne LaCroix users, just be aware that if you hit signal uh, single twice, it will force a trigger and, and then give you a, an update and stop. 
So that is there. There also is a stop mode on some of the scopes as well, by the way. So that is the different trigger modes. And for the situation where you don't have any update and you expected it, well, go make sure that it's, you know, so I'm recommending, go make sure you go into auto trigger, adjust your sensitivity of your waveforms in and look at the, you know, your, your vertical ground, look at your sensitivity, look at your trigger delay location, look at your time scale. I mean, get, get a lay of the land and then go ahead and modify the trigger modes listed above. Okay. And this is the front panel just showing you uh, you know, the Teledyne uh, LaCroix. And this will be, this will show you that whether you are armed and if it fired, you will see an updated trigger uh, light will come on. And once it stops, uh, if you're in a single mode, then that light will go off. So we have auto, normal, single. Just hit this. Yeah, it actually, there's a ready and a triggered light and the triggered light flashes when I do have a valid trigger. Okay, so that is the front panel and auto versus normal. Okay. And let's see. You know, let's go, let's do this. Let's go to the scope. And uh, we're live right now. And I'm going to just do this. This is uh, showing you that I have uh, the oscilloscope uh, application running. Uh, now, what's our trigger? What is our trigger look, uh, situation right here? Let's look at the bottom right descriptors. We are stopped. We are, um, therefore, let's go to normal here. And now I am updating. And I have a little different, uh, interesting signal here. Um, and uh, to point out, this is in the middle where 50% pre-trigger, 50% post-trigger. Uh, and I'm going to move my go to webinar controls down so I can see, yep, this is the trigger level and our descriptor uh, tells us what the voltage level is of 1.87 uh, volts. We're looking for a width and a positive going pulse. So we're gonna, so we're good. We're going, we're live right now back to PowerPoint and let's look at some uh, trigger conditions. And that is, this is the dialogue menu. I'll show you live or I did show you live, but will, we'll, we'll go back to it throughout the webinar. We are, we're gonna look here at the source, the coupling, the slope, and the level. Let's just look at that. We do see that the trigger descriptor um, is, these are the values that are currently set now at one and a half, minus one and a half millivolts. We're edge triggered in this case. Uh, and our source is channel one in DC. So when we go back to the scope, let's look at those. Here is the uh, the way the Teledyne LaCroix dialog menu is, is look to the first tab to the left and it will and it will give you what dialog menu you have. And there's a couple ways you can use the upper ribbon to get to the trigger setup that opens this up. I just like touching with a touch screen or with my mouse. I'm using the mouse here so you folks can see what I'm doing. So there's the trigger. And, uh, and so here's the sources, right? And you can view uh, any of our, well, in this case, eight channels as a trigger source, external and digital uh, signal. So any analog, your digital signals can be uh, uh, utilized here as your source. Coupling, we have AC, DC, low frequency and high frequency reject. I do want, I just have a, a slide on that that I want to uh, point out to you that something might be, you know, just a little reminder about that positive, negative and trigger level. Uh, is here. Okay. Within the PowerPoint now, I, I this is uh, as I follow this flow. This these are the this is the trigger dialog menu. Briefly, there is off to the right. By the way, there is a little uh, icon that describes what your trigger type is, and that's off display to the right. Here's a little uh, thing on on trigger coupling. So. Um, I, I often forget about it when I use the, the scope, but the most common ones that I do use, but very infrequently though, is this um, in, in trigger coupling. Remember, it's its own amplifier, right? So we are, if we want to look at high, medium to high frequency signals, 
and we don't want the trigger to be affected by low frequency, then we'll go ahead and do a low fat, low frequency reject. So DC is rejected uh, here, and it's the it's up to 50 kilohertz is uh, what a low frequency reject does. So that can give you more stable, you know, and this triggers. There also is high frequency reject. So if you're, um, this was basically uh, going to be a, uh, a low pass filter, it attenuates frequencies above kilo, 50 kilohertz. I didn't know that it was 50 kilohertz until I prepared for this webinar. And, uh, and it's used for triggering now on low frequency. It reduces it, the high frequency uh, noise effects on a trigger. There is AC and DC. I don't get to use those too much, but just as an example of this, it acts pretty much like an amplifier on your front end. Uh, uh, I'll pick on AC uh, coupling where that's where really we're going to reject DC levels up to about 50 hertz, and um, and so we might want to look at you know spikes riding on top of a of a, a signal, and maybe it's a DC signal. And, uh, and therefore, we want to eliminate that DC, so we could trigger, set the trigger level at that spikes rather than uh, be tied into potentially the limit of DC uh, in the trigger circuit. So, I mean, that's pretty much it. I for this half-hour seminar, this is or webinar, this is what you know I'll, I'll I'll address. And the same thing here with DC. DC lets in everything. So. Um, but at any rate, I, I, again, I don't get to use those too often, um, but um, let's see, sources, I think we're good. So uh, this now is, uh, let's take a look at the delay, and that is, remember, that is the position of the trigger event and shown on the bottom of the of grid for the Teledyne uh, LaCroix, and it is it's a time uh, relative to the trigger vent, and you can move it from left to right. And and I on this, I just have a couple points here. It can it's going to be negative, right? You can show pre-trigger information as negative values. And and when we go to the scope, let's go to the scope. We're at 50% pre-trigger. If we slow this down, and how how far can we, can we see, you can see me moving to the right. I'm now at 90% pre-trigger and 10% um, and post-trigger. So I can see everything that led up to this pulse on this particular channel. And of course, if I had other waveforms turned on, it would be to those waveforms as well. So, uh, but how much? Just a little fun fact, how much can you go pre-trigger? And so we can move this up and you'll notice now in the bottom right, there is that little arrow and it does show you that you have um, minus. And the trigger is upstream, if you will, to the right. And this is all the pre-trigger information. So how far can you go with that pre-trigger? Well, let's go back to the slide and the slide shows uh, that we really, the maximum pre-trigger delay the point off the grid and, and to the bottom right, as mentioned, represents 10 divisions, of course, and but it can go here it was. <laughs> it, the instrument's maximum sample rank is the limiting factor there. So you could really send it uh, out there depending on your time base and the amount of memory. There also is post-trigger delay. And let me do this. I'm going to take this and I'm going to go to this mode so I can bounce between. Yep. And and so you're going to see me move the trigger delay to the left. So we're going to trigger, and then we're going to add them on a delay so we can see what's going on upstream. Maybe your circuit is noisy. Maybe it has some jitter to it. And so what we want to do is see what that is from our trigger point, our point of interest in our design, and what is happening upstream and how much noise, well, how much time jitter do we have? Well, you can do this now. Um, this delay is up to an equivalent 10,000 divisions. So I thought that was kind of an interesting fun fact as we drink our coffee or whatever we're drinking here for our, uh, our coffee break. Okay. <laughs> I 
All right. So that's the scope, and I can move this off. You'll see the delay come back on screen now and go all the way to the left. And they'll just keep on it going. Keep an eye out. This does show you on this particular uh, scope, it does show you, or on the Teledyne LaCroix, uh, we indicate it this way so that our delay is downstream. And then the grid value from that trigger location is listed here as here. This grid is 79 milliseconds from that trigger event. And we can see what's going on and how much noise is, and how much jitter. I might just move it down just for grins, see how I did. It's repeating. So it's pretty much stable out here. Okay, so anyway, that's uh, use your triggers to help you with uh, validating your circuits and, and doing uh, debugging. Okay, to keep uh, moving along here, we are going to now, this is the time base. Now, when, when we use that delay, uh, there's a, a couple different choices that we have on how, as we vary our time scale, do we use the center graticule as our reference point for the time base change, or do we use the trigger location and vary around that? So here we have my signal the one that I'm actually capturing, and look where the trigger delay is. It's right here. This is our trigger location, 20% pre-trigger, 80%, right? And as we change the time scale, we're gonna do a, just a little bit narrower time window. Where does that delay go? Well, it goes off to the left. Why? Because we're using the center of the grid as the uh, reference point for the time scale change. So that doesn't change. We might be looking at the 10th pulse on a on 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 a data that we've captured and we just want to take a look at that then we would just use the delay put our wave part of the waveform of interest in the middle change the time base and we can really use that as a live updated uh, waveform based around the, the center but what if we want to put keep that trigger right there and we want to see the details of this pulse then what we'll do is is change to lock to trigger and we will uh, now as we change whoops up i should go up here as we change the time scale to a narrower narrower time window the no longer does that pulse stay there it moves off to the right but our delay gets stays solid so just be aware scopes you have a preference how do you get there well in the current firmware and the, and, uh, the newer model uh, oscilloscopes do have at if you're a Teledyne LaCroix user, uh, you it focuses to the center, that's the default, but you can change it to block to trigger. And then if you have prior uh, firmware uh, with other models of oscilloscopes, I did not list those here, uh, you would go up to utilities pull down menu, go to preference setup and uh, a selection, and then go to the tab as we see here called acquisition. And then the delay setting is listed now here. Uh, it defaults to time, which is center, and then division says, hey, I'm gonna use the trigger location as the reference for time scale changes. So that's how you do that. And I'll go right back to the scope. I'm just gonna push horizontal so that the I'm automatically, that my delay is uh, the now trigger location set to the middle. 50% pre-trigger, and I'll move it back here, and I'm going to do, there's that 20, and as I change, you, what have I got it set to? Yes, I have it set to, in the time base, I have it locked to trigger position, but what happens if I go to centered, and look, I'm going to just move it over so I have this right here, okay, in the center, right there and then now what happens if i change watch that zero delay which is now at about 15 14 percent pre-trigger it's gone it's off screen to the left why because i'm looking at a narrow time window now i can really focus in on this given my trigger condition okay so that is there i do let me just see one thing i do see a question here uh, and okay i'll just answer that one at the end i just want to make sure everyone was seeing what I was doing here okay um, okay so now I can see uh, this detail okay back to PowerPoint as we 
continuing to move along. 30 minutes, I found it <laughs> doesn't give me a lot of, lot of time, but we're getting there, we're doing well. Okay, let's do uh, trigger types. So there are, if we take a look at the data sheet, right, just to give you a quick review of all the different types that oscilloscope, this particular oscilloscope that I'm using here has the, this on the website. So it's got edge triggers and width triggers and glitches and patterns and runs. And I do have uh, copies in the PowerPoint that you'll get, of course. And and uh, and then there is also some low speed serial. Uh, there's multi-stage. Let's, let's go through some of those here. Okay, so this is a trigger type and we're looking now at the still at the trigger dialog menu and width. So your oscilloscopes can trigger on a width and there will be controls on your scope that show you what the width the condition is. And this one I asked for, hey, give me a trigger, a trigger on a width if, if the width is uh, greater than two milliseconds. Why? I was looking for this pulse. I wanted to know what that trigger uh, level was and, and um, yeah, so I'll, I'll do that. I'll go live and, and show you that. Um, yeah, so let me, I'll just keep going to give you some more examples. Here's another one. This one is, if we look, this is a smart trigger, which opens up the dialog menu for more choices and that we have a glitch. What have we triggered on? We've triggered on a condition, which is an interval between 200 nanoseconds and 150 nanoseconds. How did I come up with that? Well, from my other webinars, if you remember, I, I look at the width values here and I can tell that I have some, I got a really narrow glitch right here, even though the average width on these other waveforms are much wider. So I purposefully you set the trigger to be between this value because it showed me in the parameter table that the smallest value was down in the nanoseconds. And, the, and there it is. So that is uh, our value. That is our glitch. And it is actually 166 nanoseconds. <laughs> okay, so that's the trigger type. Another trigger type is the, uh, the good old uh, runt. And so basically we're looking off to the right at two different voltage levels and we want to trigger uh, if anything transitions to one of those and not the other. Uh, then uh, those are the two voltage levels that we set. And here's the two voltage, uh, the upper and the lower value. And we are looking for a, I even set a condition here to be, you know, within this time window as well. So, uh, so I hope I'm giving you some ideas that, you know, triggers can be used to your advantage to find things within uh, your circuit to help debug. And so these smart triggers, this is the Boolean. I'm, I've already alluded to that there's less than, greater than, equal to, in a range, out of a range. And so these are useful values for you to, you know, as you use your scopes, um, consider those um, with your debugging efforts. And you can do, you can set specific nominal values, or you can say, hey, give me, you know, a range of within 3% of, you know, of these values. If it goes outside or less than, greater than, then you can do that too. There are dropout triggers and so they're, uh, you, def you define through the conditions to the right what the, what the, uh, well, what the trigger condition will be. And, and I still think about whether we're going to be auto to set this up and then normal and single shot uh, will be used as your uh, mode. This one is uh, showed you more of that condition to that uh, earlier. And then I also have here a qualified trigger. This is a multi-stage uh, trigger. It says, hey, let's trigger on multiple events by arming the trigger on a single first event, which is event A, or a succession of multiple events, and then uh, trigger on the, the, the successful successive event and so we have an ed event a and event b so event a is the arm which could be an edge or a width or and then the the next event would be event b that you would also define by hitting that tab if i go up here to back to the oscilloscope right now i touched a trigger descriptor 
I go ahead and I select multi-stage. There is that display that we're looking at. This is a qualified, this says, hey, trigger on, arm on event A, then trigger on event B. And then you have, you know, you can hold off and say, hey, I see this event B to get really complicated trigger if you'd like. Trigger on, after you've armed with A, trigger on B, then hey, why don't you um, look for and delay uh, uh, by events? So I'm gonna look for two events. And after two events, then I'm going to uh, trigger. So arm, set the trigger, but delay by events or time, and then trigger and capture the data. So you can vary all of these values. The, the manual really does a great job of this. Don't forget, you can go up here to support, and then there's dynamic help also that would, would come up and give you more details for how to set these up. So that's qualified triggers and, and others. So uh, your oscilloscope manufacturers have manuals. <laughs> and so this, I, I just tried to, since I only have 30 minutes or so, I just tried to at least whet your appetite that these are qualified triggers are uh, potential uh, tools to help you with uh, debugging and validating circuits. So let's see how we're doing here. Okay, and then this is a, another trigger. This is a pattern trigger. We're showing you eight digital uh, uh, signals that have been captured, right? We set the threshold for the logic on this, right? We define uh, what, what that logic levels are. And there's have four different groups of those. But anyway, we're looking at eight channels and then we're, we've decoded those and we, we put the bus uh, decoded uh, hexadecimal values there along the bottom as well. But the trigger, you see the trigger dialog menu is open. We, we are looking for a pattern called 00010110. You can vary each of those, of course. And so, uh, so that's how you work with the digital, but you may, when you want to look at the interaction of an embedded design, for example, you may also want to call up your, your other four or eight channels and you can look for this or this, or there's a Boolean logic as I mentioned in the slide. So that is uh, your choices here on, and when you're working with digital patterns. There is, I think here, if I go back to the scope, let's go to, let's go to pattern. And let's go to set up pattern. And so there is, you know, this is us, us live. And so this is the channel one through eight. So you can actually set up, you know, the high, the low, the don't care, if you will, on your analog too. So you can look for, you can define what the value is for high and, and for low and, and create an analog pattern as well so don't forget that even if you don't have mixed signals so uh, yet another tool for triggering <laughs> okay all right now i'm gonna go back to powerpoint and let's see all right so i'm moving along and the really the last item is i do get questions from customers that go they go why is my update rate uh, slow you know and so <laughs> so it's all about how you've set up the scope. And that's really what I would like to uh, talk about here. So what affects the update rate, the refresh rate on oscilloscopes? And so, and how do you get the best refresh rate? Why are you trying to do this? It's because you're trying to make sure you don't miss any data in between triggers. Now, I prefer using long memory and grabbing all kinds of data. And therefore, there is no trigger delay. <laughs> So use the 250 or 500 gig that's now on the Croy scopes, not to get too salesy on you, but, but so you can use all that memory and have zero trigger jitter and zero dead time between events, uh, right? At least what covers the 500, the 500 gig amount of memory. But anyway, if we look at the more memory the have, the more processing you'll, the time it will take. So that can slow things down memory length if we're working with very short memory of then yeah we can get that update rate to be very fast uh and so that will work uh so fast sample rate with short memory is going to really give you very fast update rate the time window of course if you're working with one second per division 
then 10 seconds worth of data is going to take a long time to update rate. <laughs> I'd, I'd go to I'd go to roll mode if I was doing that. But at any rate, this is uh, to make the point time window is also affects the update rate. If you have one measurement turned on versus many measurements with statistics, with histicon, that processing does take a little bit of time. And so that will slow down the update rate. And we also have uh, the, tr the uh, trigger that we've set. If we're just looking for an edge, then no problem, right? So, you know, the tr trigger will be fast. But what if we're looking for conditional triggers? Con triggers within a certain time, uh, within, you know, within or outside a range, greater than, less than, you know. So those values, those trigger conditions will also add uh, more time. So there's a lot of things that go into uh, the update rate. And just just be aware of what you're asking the scope to do with all of, with all of these things uh, uh, above. By the way, the other thing in trigger, now that I thought about it and we're talking about triggers, is your if your trigger only occurs once in a while, and that's the valid trigger you're looking for, of course, that is going to affect your update rate too. But anyway, so there's there's all kinds of stuff to uh, to think about when you uh, when when uh, when when we look at update rates. So we've covered a lot here. Uh, we we work with the scope. I'd love to spend more time with you uh, going over everything, but. Um, I do appreciate uh, all of your, uh, your 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 time, your interest, and I'll just uh, there is uh, more. Uh, all this will be recorded and is put on the Teledyne Lacroix events uh, webpage. So feel free to go look at all of these past uh, presented and stored power uh, presentations, audio, video are, are there. They're on demand. There's also more coming up. Uh, there's more coffee breaks coming up to you every month. And uh, and then this software that I'm using, if you would like to try using, uh, you know, the Lacroix Oscilloscope software on your own PC without having the scope hardware, you can do that. Just download Maui Studio, we call it, and uh, give us the light, the light, the details of the the scope ID and serial number, and we will we'll get back a license to you uh, that will open up all kinds of software uh, options. So at this point, I like to turn it back over to Lena and, uh, and, and, and see if you guys, uh, if guys and gals, uh, folks have any We questions. had, uh, thanks Steve. Yes, we had one question that came in. Um, it is, can a trigger be set on one channel relative to another? For example, if scoping two identical signals, trigger when one of the channels strays one V from the other? Um. Let me see. I'm just going to do this. Uh, yes, so, I mean, you can trigger on two channels, right? Or you can trigger on one channel. I'm thinking qualified trigger might be really the best for that. I mean, it's going to look for channel one or channel two as the source. I would might might use the actually the qualified uh, trigger to, to have one of the channels armed and then the other. I'm not sure if I'm answering it completely, though. Uh, I don't see the question panel on my end, so I can't review it very well. Let's see. No, nope, I can't. So, but I hope that gives you enough uh, info. Uh, we, you're, you are, you were that the scope trigger circuits will are define what the sources are, and uh, they look for one, typically one or the other channels, whether it be analog or digital, external, and then uh, qualify would be give you may give you more flexibility. Again, I hope that answers your question from uh, what I uh, what I heard the question was. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, um, yeah and if anyone has any other questions, uh, uh, the Steve's email uh, information is on the presentation, so you can always uh, send him over, send us over uh, any other questions that you have. But um, so I don't see any other questions. Uh, we are at about 2.40, but I'd like to thank Steve for his time, and I'd like to thank everyone for attending. Part four of the Coffee Break series we were talking about. The next one is on April 29th. So please check our events page as we post new topics all the time. Um, thank you, everyone, and have a great afternoon. Yeah, great. Thanks, everyone. Stay safe. Yes, yeah, stay safe. Thanks. <laughs>